Cheddar Ale, Goat Sleep, India Pale Ale. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Today is the 23rd of April, which is St George's Day. And if you're a fan of English beer, then this one looks like a good one. Now, I've never had one from this lot before, and I have actually been to where they are based. And it's a lovely part of the world, Somerset, Cheddar Gorge. I'm sure there's people watching this that have been there. It is absolutely amazing. The scenery there is sublime. I went there in 1990 and I nearly had a fight with a Bristol City fan. Apparently they don't like West Ham down there. And what else happened? It was a mad weekend. I don't even know how I ended up down there. But Cheddar Gorge, I do remember it being absolutely gorgeous. But I was on Beers of Europe the other day and I came across this one and I thought, this really does sound right up my street. I'm not gonna go into the ingredients, but when you hear the ingredients, you realize why it's up my street. And with it being St George's Day, I think this is a fitting beer for St George's Day. It is an English IPA or India Pale Ale. You know, you remember when IPAs were IPAs? I, I, for the life of me, I really don't know why the Americans chose to use IPA as the style of beer. If they'd have called it an American ale, it would have been more accurate. You know, IPAs are traditional. There's a lot of myths surrounding IPAs, but they are a traditional British beer, which came about completely by accident. It was basically because there was a tax introduced <clears throat> on malt during the Napoleonic Wars, and the beers became lighter in color, Hops were becoming more and more popular, and this nonsense about it, you know, there being extra hops in there just to survive the, the journey to India, it's just, it just isn't true. It is not true. Please do not perpetuate that myth that the, the beers that came from the United Kingdom that went to India had to have loads of hops in them to survive the journey. The soldiers in India, the British soldiers in India, they drank porter. And the reason they drank porter was because it was cheaper and it tasted nicer. And the reason it went to India was because it was one of these beers that got better as it went over there. This notion that beer spoiled on the journey. Yeah, beer will spoil on a journey, but it depends how it's brewed and how it's packed and how it's sent over there. And if you really want to know about IPA, I've got a video on my channel. I know I keep banging on about this, and every time I review an IPA, I always plug this video that I do, but please watch it just to get rid of all the myths that are surrounding the IPAs. Now, this is an English IPA, which differs significantly from American IPAs. Now, you may like that craft beer, the American hop, very fruity style IPA. You know, you've got the New England IPA the West Coast IPA, and you've got the American Pale Ales as well, which have them very resinous, very fruity American hops. To be honest, I don't mind them either. Some of them are really nice. I particularly like New England IPAs. Haven't reviewed a New England in a while, but that's not because I don't like the style. It's just, I think everybody else is reviewing American style IPAs. They don't need someone else, especially not an ugly bastard like me reviewing IPAs. So I'm gonna stick with tradition. And hence the reason I'm reviewing traditional English or British beers, if you like, German beers and Belgian beers and other beers from around the world that maybe don't get the exposure that they deserve. Because craft beer, it doesn't need anybody else to review them, in my opinion. 
the world and his wife are reviewing craft beers. And to be honest, there's a lot of shit beers out there and they're very expensive and I'm fucked if I'm spending a lot of money on shit beer. When I say life is too short to be drinking shitty beer, I fucking mean it. And it's even shorter when you're paying a lot of fucking money for it. But there you go, rant over. Today has been a day of ranting. I put the cat down this morning, not because I wanted to, because she was very ill. I'm slightly upset about that. And I'm on a fucking knife edge at the moment. The slightest thing will set me off. And IPAs. No, I'm saying that. I fucking Nobody's set me off. It's just me, my little head. The fucking the hamster spinning around in my head is getting wound up. Anyway, let's get on to this brewery. They've been going since 2006, so they're quite new. They are based in a place called Somerset in the United Kingdom, specifically in a place called Cheddar, hence the name Cheddar Ales. Now, if Cheddar sounds familiar to you, to the foreign viewers, it's because that's where the cheese comes from. So whenever you see Irish Cheddar or Welsh Cheddar or anything like that, it's complete bollocks. The only real Cheddar cheese comes from Somerset. And they do some very good cider down there as well. And Somerset is also the home to Cotley, the brewery Cotley, which is a fantastic brewery. It's one of my favourite English brewers. So the fact that I haven't tried any cheddar ales is a bit of a a bit of a faux pas on my part because I've heard good things about them. I don't know how good they are, but let's stop gassing and let's see how good they are. Right, this is a bottle conditioned in the English India Pale Ale called Goat Sleep. I fucking love that. Let's see what it says on the side. Cheddar Ales brewed, uh, Cheddar Ales Brewery nestles on the slopes of the Mendip. Yeah, the Mendip Hills, they're well known in Somerset, overlooking the famous Cheddar Gorge, that's where I just mentioned, and produces a range of quality artisan, 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 fuck it, I'll wish have you. Artisan ales using only the finest raw materials available. I'll get onto that in a minute. Goat Sleep is a strong and robust IPA with fresh hop flavours, leading to striking bit, leading to a striker bit of finish. That's what English IPA, IPAs do. Right, I'll get onto the ingredients. Are you ready for this? It has got, and it really is a good brew sheet. If ever there was one for an English beer, Maris Otter malt, fantastic malt to use in a beer. It's got crystal malt, that will give it a nice sweetness. Caramel, again, more caramel malt as the name suggests, but also it will give it an amber hue to it. They use it a lot in uh, Eastern European beers, specifically Czech Pilsners, etc. And then you've got the hops. These are English Challenger, Goldings and Fuggles. And these come from, for this particular brewery, not from Kent, but they've Source these from Herefordshire and Worcestershire, two of the, along with Kent, three of the best producing hop counties in the United Kingdom. So it really does look like a good beer, and the it's got the tasting notes on here, and it says citrus hop, tropical fruits, fresh. Where it's getting tropical fruit from, I don't know. Taste is refreshing, fruity, and a bit of finish. Yeah, the bit of finish, I'll give you that. That's coming from the challengers, challenger hops. Sorry, what else? Chill in an upright position before serving. What else? Bottle condition contains active yeast, still hard at work, improving the beer's flavors. Store in an upright position. It doesn't say not to pour the residue in there. Now it's 5.5 percent as well. That's about average for a, an English IPA. It's not like these stupid American IPAs and the Imperial IPAs. Don't get me started on that nonsense. And relax. Let's get this beer open. Right, there's the cap. Gold cap, black etching on it, cheddar ales. Right, let's see if it lives up to what it's got written on the side. This is pour carefully. 
pull carefully. What does that mean? I have no idea. What are we getting on the nose? It does look nice. There's a bit of a gander for you. Very amber, as it suggests. One and a half finger beige head. Oh, that smells absolutely gorgeous. Marmalade. And there is fruity notes on there. Orange. Orange and marmalade. As a good English IPA should smell of. Now, if you've ever tasted Bengal Lancer from Fuller's, that's a fucking great IPA. English style IPA. And it's got like a, a marmalade, orange zest type flavour to it, which is a bit of a trademark for Fuller's. This smells a little bit sweeter. It really does smell like orange, freshly peeled orange. And that's about it really. Now it's not strong obviously. There's some earthiness to it that's coming through there. The bitterness, I'm wondering where the bitterness is coming from. Oh, it really is. It's just like a an orange, freshly peeled orange. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is bitter there. There is bitter there, yeah, definitely. Nice little black pepper type bitterness to it. Mm. Oh, this smells really good. They say there's live yeast in there. I don't think I'm going to get it all into the glass. It's quite lively, I will say that. That's more or less a full pint and there's a little bit left in there. Nice amount of carbonation in there. Can you see that? Lovely amber colour, quite dark amber colour as well. One and a half, possibly two finger, foamy, loosely packed, off-white head. Let's get it down the hatch. Bottoms up. Oh, that is fucking great. That is beautiful. Oh. Wow. What a fucking beer that is. Oh, that's amazing. Talk about blown away. Wow, really good. You're getting everything, every characteristic of the hops and the malt in one mouthful. And that is some feat when you consider, consider the malts, <laughs> consider the lily. Consider the lily! He's oh, having a go at the flowers oh, now! Give the flowers a chance! Marisotta, crystal and caramel. Right. You're definitely getting the Marisotta, just that real wholesome caramel type malt that you get in really good English bitters and IPAs. When you use Marisotta, you unless you're a complete twat. It's hard to go wrong with the malt style flavors. And that really does come through. But you've also got the caramel on that as well. Now caramel does give it a bit of a sweetness and the crystal malt gives it a bit of a sweetness. And that comes through <clears throat> in abundance on there. But the hops on this, <clears throat> excuse me, fucking hell. The hops on this, again, shine through. You've got the challenger on the finish. You've got that nice black pepper bitterness that you just get right at the end. But in between that, you've got a lot of fruit. Like, again, the orange is there, but there's a sweetness, like a green apple sweetness type there as well. It's really good.
the bitterness isn't too much on that. You can just get a little touch of it on the end. There's a lot of that orange zest and orange flavor in there as well, but it's not as big as it is on the aroma because the malts come through in this as well. Now, American IPAs, they're all about the hops. But if you get a really good English IPA, buy a brewer who knows the tradition and knows what an IPA, a true IPA, and a true English India pale ale tastes like, then it, it can't be beaten in my opinion. If you get a British brewer that knows the traditions about IPAs, where it started, its roots, how it came about, you'll know that they will put a lot of emphasis on the malt as well. And it's what Fuller's do, it's what Shepherd Neem do, it's what Adnams do, it's what all them really good, Cotley do it as well, it's what all them good traditional English brewers do with their IPAs. Uh, Ridgeway is another one, they do it as well. And it's so easy to just fall into the trap of throwing a load of American hops into an IPA and yeah, hoping for the best. But to brew something like this, I think not only takes skill, but it takes balls as well in, a, in an age where you've got craft beer on every street corner everyone brewing craft beer on every street corner, brewing IPAs, packing them full of American hops. And yeah, you've, you've got some sort of fruit, bitter fruit cocktail. I don't think it comes close to this. I really don't. And that's not a slight on the craft brewers. They're doing their thing. People like the beer. And if people like the beer, who am I to say it's crap? It's just not for me. It's, no, that's a lie. When I say it's not for me, it's not my preferred style. I don't mind some of it. I, I must admit, I prefer the the New England stuff to the West Coast stuff. Occasionally, Stone Stone Brewing do some good West Coasts, but for me, if it's if it has to be American, then it's going to be a New England. But compared to this, you know, this is this is what I like, and you know, you can scoff and say, oh, it's boring, it's old man's beer, it's not exciting. It's not meant to be exciting, it's about flavor. What do you want from a beer? I, ju I just want honest beer. I want honest beer brewed by honest brewers for a decent price with decent ingredients. That is what all I want from a beer, and this has got it. Oh, it's so good. There's caramel malt. Bordering on the toffee malt as well. There's a little bit of toffee on that, as you would expect from decent brewers. Shepherd Neem is the same. They've got a little bit of caramel and toffee malt in their India Pale Ale as well. Yes, there's hops on there. The bitterness at the back end, that does come through. But the malts are big on this, and that's why they've included Marisotta. <laughs> The old memory's going, I can't remember off the top of your head. Marisota, Crystal and Caramels. Most craft brewers would not do that. They would put some pale malt in there, maybe a little bit of, I don't know, Munich malt or Pilsner malt into their IPAs, and then in goes the hops, and it's just bang, like I say, a bitter fruit cocktail. This, oh, I hate using this term, but it's the thinking man's IPA. It's lovely. It's all about the subtlety. The drinkability on this is absolutely superb. This for me is an absolute winner. And in my opinion, it's up there with the best of them. So what's the verdict on Cheddar Ale, Cheddar Ale's Goat Sleep? Yeah, very good indeed. In fact, it's more than that, it's completely blown me away. On a shit day, where I've had to put the cat down, this has put a little bit of a smile on my face. And to me, this is what an IPA should be. And this is where the tradition comes in. It's very much in the same vein as the Sam Smith's IPA, the Shepherd Neem IPA, the Fuller's Bengal Lancer, 
and this can rightly hold its head up amongst all of them. That is really good. And for me to say that, that takes some doing because these small brewers occasionally can get it wrong. I'm thinking of Burton Bridge here. Again, a brewer, a brewer from a traditionally great area. I've heard really good things about their cask beer. The bottled beer is fucking terrible. But this stuff is really good. In fact, it more or less blew me away. And it's rare that a brewer will do that, an English brewer will do that with an IPA. IPAs are good, solid beers, but there's only three or four that have done that in the past. And I've tried a lot of English IPAs. Some of them have been not that great. I can see what they're trying to do, but they just haven't achieved it. Others have just thrown a load of American hops in there or, or called it an IPA with an American twist. But this has stuck by tradition and they've got it absolutely spot on. And that is a credit to them. And this is my first one from Cheddar Ales. So you can bet your fucking bottom dollar that there is going to be some more coming from Cheddar Ales. This is like a Cotley Brewery moment. And again, another brewer from Somerset. I'll have to get down there sample this on cask it's w without a doubt it's a 10 out of 10 for me it's absolutely superb i saw the brew sheet when i was looking it up and i thought i'll give i'll give that a go on paper it looks very good but i'll tell you something it fucking backs it up in the taste that is brilliant well done cheddar ales that is superb that is 10 out of 10 for me and i urge you to try and get some of this got it on beers of europe relatively cheaply if you like your Fuller's Bengal Lancer, if you like your Shepherd Neem India Pale Ale, if you like your Sam Smith's India Ale, you're going to fucking love this, I tell you, because it's great. And it's what Britain does best. This is what we should be promoting. You know, the Americans, yeah, you can do what you like with your American ops. Just give us our British ops, the Challenger, the Goldings and the Fuggles. And I don't care if you think it's boring. For me, this is what beer is all about. Brilliant. 10 out of 10 recommended and remember just like this stuff beer is working class champagne <laughs>